Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Porky here. You know, don't you? You know. That's why you've tuned in. Right. Got a few things down. Last couple of days and that, I thought I'd have a bit of a break from, from boxing. Uh, it's interesting to see all these YouTubers coming out now, giving an opinion and talking about this MTK panorama thing. I find that very interesting. Because uh, nobody said a word for over a week, did they? Only me. Nobody knew what to do, did they? It's like they were waiting to be told, yeah, you can go talk about it. And that to me is not being the media. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, not good. But for those who did speak about it straight away and gave an opinion, well, well, well done. You should never be frightened of having an opinion. All you people out there who want to set up a YouTube channel or just have an opinion in life because we live in a democracy, don't we? All right. Everybody's scared to death doing anything, saying anything. Oh, it's MTK, you'll get done in. Boxing more of control, don't do a thing. But yeah, they'll come down heavy on me when I work with Dennis Hobson and come down heavy on Dennis, cancel any shows because of things that I've done on social media and said, but yeah, what about all the accusations that governments and Irish police and media are aiming at MTK? The board never did a thing, did they? And quite rightly so, Daniel Kinahan's not been in trouble yet, has he? He's not been arrested or charged or anything. So quite rightly so, but if it had been anybody else, Charlie Giles, Robert Smith, and all the Keystone cops down there at Cardiff, they would have done something about it, wouldn't they? Instead of passing the book. So that's been noted. But it is what it isn't. Uh, do you know what I mean? Uh Right. Uh, remember a little look at this. Moving, moving on, moving on. We've got, we've got loads to get through today. Loads. Uh, Andrade against Liam Williams. Uh, I think Andrade. Everybody that he's beat, Liam Williams beats and beats them comfortably. I don't think Andrade's mixed. In the same company as Liam Williams, he's been in with Beefy Smith, and it who's been in with Canelo. So, I think that Liam Williams win, wins that fight. I think Andrade will try and stink the place out. I think he's a bully boy. He's all right when he's on top. That's why he's undefeated. It's all right picking at the bones of carcasses like Brian the Lion Rose. Fair enough, we can understand that. Who at the time were British level. We're talking Liam Williams here, who's icing people. The guy's a little ice man from Wales, and I think he beats William. I think he beats, sorry, Andrade, and I hope he does because he's annoying that Andrade, and he's annoying me. He's giving me a ulcer. Not a Tony Bellew ulcer, but getting there, isn't it? So I just, I just hear him on social media. He always got a saying, I don't like him. So Liam Williams, I hope you do him in. So... Put him on a block of ice, Liam. Uh, we have a little pop here at all these people that are doing podcasts and YouTubers. I watched one this morning, 5 a.m. in the morning. Walk up. I knew I had a lot to do today, so I walk up. I put it on, I thought, do you know what? Before I, before I go into office today, I'm going to have a little look at the uh, Mark Breland. Spencer Fear and Tunde Ajayi interview. Do you know what? It was the worst interview I've ever seen in my life. Don't get me wrong. I've been bigging Spencer Fear up lately because he's done a couple of appearances only on MTK as an analyst. And you know, I think he's found his forte. So good luck to him. All right? It's still a weapon though, but good luck to him. But Breland was sat nowhere near his audio. It was distorted. You've got Tunde Ajayi. Every time Breland breathed or picked his nose, Tunde Ajayi is falling all over the floor laughing. Is he on laughing gas him or something? He's annoying as well. He's getting there to give me an ulcer like Tony Bellew. He's in that company. You know, he's chasing Bellew down for an annoying person. But he does talk a lot of sense, Tunde, but... 
at times, but he's annoying and he still had to come out with it, didn't he? That lion's in the camp. There's no lions in any camp. You know, it, I'd be very surprised if Anthony Yard's still using him in 12 months. But it's only he's only there by skin of his teeth because the the play probably playing on art strings and look what we did together and all that. Look, point I want to make is that you shouldn't just discard your trainer at a drop of a hat, but when your trainer's making it about him and not the fighter, I mean, <laughs> every time I turn my telly on, I've got these two, Batman and Robin, you know, <sighs> laughing every two minutes. How can I understand what Mark Breland's saying? Because he sounds like Scooby-Doo as it is, and you've got this Tundi bloke laughing a drop of an hat and calling him Mr. Breel and Lions in the camp. Laugh, 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 laugh. And Spencer there giggling like a little schoolgirl. Spencer, reel it in. You keep going on about these people in your black book. Get somebody on that's going to listen to you and sit near Mike. You know, like this here. What I do, Spencer, I get near this here. I get near it. And get really close to it. But what happens is sometimes you can you cannot have your audio on properly, so it has to be tested. You know what I mean? I'm still learning on job me, but there's no worse than that, is that my audio were terrible for months in here. So we sorted it out. I still don't know what I've been doing now. But yeah, it it, it, it was starting to annoy me uh, and uh I couldn't, I couldn't finish it. I, I skipped first 20 minutes and I, and I missed the last 10 minutes. But it, it were it were annoying me. It were annoying me. And all this lions in the camp. I thought they I thought they stopped all that nonsense. That lions in the camp nonsense. So Tunde Ajayi, I know you're watching. Stop it. Stop. With all this lions in the camp crap. Uh, let me just get this camera sorted here because I don't know what I'm fucking on with. Let's we'll see what that does. See if that's any good. Is that better? I don't fucking know where I'm on with. Uh, that's a bit better. Uh, Eddie Earn. Eddie Hearn, Edward Hearn, little Edward. He keeps pushing this 40 quid narrative, done it for pay-per-view, but who broke that story? Me. I broke the 25 quid one when everybody said, Parky, you're making it up. Broke the 40 quid one as well, didn't I, before anybody mentioned it? Anybody. All right, go look on my channel, you'll see. Uh, I think what's happening is, I think I wrote it down, actually. Is Eddie reaching out with the high pay-per-view chit-chat because he knows cards? Oh, sorry, because he knows crowds won't won't flock back. So they're going to be charging that to make up for him having the short bag, you know, short end of money because if there's no crowds there, they're going to be without, aren't they, on when they put everything in. When they put every, everything into part, put it all in part. Listen, Ross, what we'll do. Do that, it all goes in part. Yeah, okay, Dan. Well, it all goes into part. The melting pot, I call it. Or the honey pot. You know, like uh, Winnie the Pooh, when he got his hands stuck in, in honey. Well, that's Dennis. When it comes to dividing honey up, Dennis has all honey, and there's like little drops for everybody else. Well... It all goes into part, and Eddie Earns probably thinking we need to maximise our earnings with this show, and that's what happens. They have to get as much money in as they can, so he's only doing his job, isn't he? But I think forty quid's a liberty. I think that uh, it's just abusing fans, in my opinion. I think it's. I mean, they're already fighting in another country, aren't they? Like they're fighting in another country, but then they want us to pay for it. Oh, we'll charge them 40 quid in England, but we're fighting in another country. I mean, <laughs> if this fighting about money now, I don't know what is, but it's called prize fighting, isn't it? The point I want to make is the sheer brass neck on these people. We'll charge them 40 quid. We're going to go to a country that's got a terrible human rights record, terrible, chopping people, arms off, legs, 
burning them, branding them, you know, when they brand you. For a big bit, like they do horses and cows, branding you. They do all sorts of horrible things out there, but you'll get Adam Smith when he gets on that microphone. Great to be back with the Blue Di Ribbon Division, Matt. Yes, what a great place Saudi is. Great people, great food, great company, Matt. All as you want it. Sizzling. But Adam Smith, a.k.a. Bean, he'll forget to mention about somebody nicking a bit of bread and getting the fingers cut off and stuff like that, won't you, Adam Smith? You'll be promoting Saudi, won't you, like Anthony Joshua does. What is he, an ambassador for Saudi travel? Flying him up to Dubai and back from England and private jet and all that, and he's the front man for Saudi. A bit like... Uh, Back in the day, you used to fly into uh, Miami Airport, Miami International Airport, and you go up the stairs and you see big picture of Don Johnson and Philip Michael Thomas out Miami Vice. Well, it's same when you get to Saudi, you've got Joshua there and that he's flag bearer, isn't he, for Saudi? You know, human rights country that do terrible things to terrible people and that. And th this is how this is how greed and greed and General rottenness reaches into the core inside people and they just turn a blind eye about it, don't they? They'll have a little pop about anything else that's going on, but you need to look at themselves. So this this fight, it's all about getting 100 million each. Why do they need 100 million each We're already? multi sofi swimming in Cho Chai. So what do they want? 100 million each. How about they wait it out with COVID and then fight in England and let everybody go to it? Just like Frotch Grove 2 at Wembley. Why can't they do that? Or like Vladimir against Joshua at Wembley. Can't do that, can they? Because both of them, it could be career-ending fights, so they want to get paid. I can understand that, but it's not to make themselves comfortable, is it now? It's to make generation after generation after generations comfortable. A bit like Eddie Hearn, isn't it, when he's greedy with money. They've already got their pile of dough, haven't they? But it's just about piling more up in it and... I, leaves a bad, leaves a bad taste in my mouth. But it is what it is, isn't it? Uh, viewer, lowercase in capital R at Sky. UK. If you've got a complaint about any issues with Sky, you know, with pay per view or anything, and Ed Robinson will get to get get your email. Then, if you want to get in touch with him. Tell him what you think, because he can't be left to me to say, it's not fair, 40 quid. Look, what they're going to do, they're going to come out, Eddie's going to say, look, get all your mates around, all chip in a tenner each. It's only like two pizzas. It's not that. It was 15 quid when Eddie brought pay-per-view back, and he got it cancelled for three years in the UK, didn't he? Nearly three years after his first one. But that were, that were a cash grab, cash grab, wasn't it? Audley Harrison against David A. We all remember that, don't we? Audley Harrison bursting through airport and we entourage and big T-shirt on. Yes, I can. Audley, no, you can't. You know what I mean? But the uh, point I want to make is about these YouTubers and these people like Tundee Jay. Getting back to what we're on about then. These people laughed. People like me in 2017. They used to take the mickey out at Boxing Asylum, lads. And they've been going 10 years nearly. I think it's about 10 years. They used to laugh at them, ridicule them at shows, talk behind the backs, hammer them. But now look, they've all got them, haven't they? Hey? They've all got them. So we all must be geniuses then, eh? What do you think? Are we geniuses? Because they all want a piece of action now. They're eating off our plate now. So as far as I can so as far as I'm concerned, they're fair game now. If they want to act the goat, they are fair game. So it's no good going like that. Ah, Porky's having me on his channel and ringing people up. And you know what I'm about Spencer, don't you? Ringing people up and getting them to ring other people I know. If you behave like a helmet, you will be voted a helmet and you will get a mention on here. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So, but they're all doing these podcasts and things like that. But what can you do? It's. Uh, just one of them. It's one of them things, isn't it? It's one of them things. Right, we've got that. We've got that dealt with. Uh, let's have a look here. We've done that one. 
Nikki Smedley. You might not, you might not, not many of you might not have heard of Nikki Smedley. He uh, he was a boxer who fought for for Dennis back in the day. Uh, he's got a company in Sheffield called Black Cat Promotions. They do all unlicensed stuff. They put fire breathers on, white collar events unlicensed, singers, comedians, bit of food on and all that. Put shows on in Sheffield. He's got a gym uh, with his dad. In Woodhouse in Sheffield, it's called King's Gym. I was there the other day. I filmed his dad, interviewed him, Chris Medley. Now, Nicky wants to fight John Fuchs, a.k.a. the Fireball. Uh, I think they should fight, but unlicensed. I don't think they should give anybody any money from board. Why? What, what are board doing for anybody? What are the boxing board doing for anybody? What did they ever do for Fuchs? I don't think Dennis should get involved. That's my opinion, and I'll tell Dennis to his face. I've seen that few key, few comments that somebody sent me. Fuki saying, "Get a board license and all that." Fuki, why does Nikki Lee need a board license to fight you? You can get at it on, on license. Just hand your license in that your trainer's license, and go have a fight on license with, with Nikki. Then go get your trainer's license back, Fuki. It's not rocket science, is it? Why should he have to go through all border control and all that? Carry on. And then have promoters wanting a slice of cake. When you can both have a have a nice slice of cake now. Nikki's told me to tell you that it was 10 grand for your Fuki to fight him. 10 grand to fight him at Magna. 10 bags. So it's up to you. That'll be your biggest payday ever. You're not going to get that fighting on a Dennis show, are you? I'm just I'm only just only saying, mate. We're not hammering anybody, we're just telling it straight. If it's about pound notes and you're coming back for money, Fuki, why would you want to be fighting for pittance when you can get 10 bags? You know, over six three-minute rounds with uh, Nicky, you get at it. I mean, you, you, what, you lost, John? Five, six stone. So I'm sure you'll be able to do it. Glyn Rhodes might not be able to be in corner because he's a board licence, but there's no shows going on at the moment. Is the Dennis has got no plan. There's no plan for your fighters. So, and your licensing. When time's right and get at it. Ten bags. Are you out of your mind? Hey, eh? You could sell it out, you and him. Ten bags each. And undercard getting paid. Just a thought for you, John. Just a thought. That's all. Uh, you know. I mean, let's have a look at John Fuchs's record. Let's have a look. What did he finish off at? 21, 2 and 2. What is he? 36 in a few months. A decent record 21 2 and 2 but when you scratch the surface there's only three wins out of them 21 other guys we winning records and they were barely winning records so and nicky's uh, record's very similar uh, although he, i don't think he won a belt but point i want to make is it's an evenly matched fight for, and you're both similar age I, I just think it's a good fight uh, I don't think they should do it with boxing border control though, because why give them any money? What do they do for anybody except themselves? They've had their hand in cookie jar far too long, boxing border control. So I wouldn't give them a penny, but it's up to Nikki and his dad Chris what they do. But I wouldn't give them a skerrit, not a skerrit. But it is what it is, isn't it? Oh, forgot to mention here John Fuchs won Central Area title against Tony Mantana, 15, 24, and 3. That's got to be his stage name, hasn't it? It can't be his real name, can it? Because there's only one Tony Montana, isn't there? Say hello to my little friend. Uh, let's have a look. I think we've covered that. Uh, I think we mentioned it that I don't think you should fight on a Ron Lyle show when basically there's more money. It's about money, isn't it? For these lads, isn't it? If they're coming back, as an, in an unlicensed, why do it? Why do a board show? Why why get border control any money? If it were a better border control, yeah, probably could do it on a Dennis show. But why get that shower that are running it now? Robert Smith, Charlie Giles, John Reese, all the rest of them. Why give them rats a penny? Why? No one likes them. When they go to shows, people in boxing industry go, look who's over there. Nobody likes any of that lot. So, because they had their hand in the cookie jar far too long, ain't you, Robert Smith? Come and take me on on here, Robert Smith. I'll have a debate with you. I've got a list of questions to ask you. You'll not come near me, will you, Robert Smith? Eh? 
So it is what it is. But if John Fuchs is going to come back and be a board registered fighter, which I won't put it past Dennis doing that. I mean, I mean, what next if they're going to do that? I don't know. I think that'd be in bad taste. Fuchs has been retired years, only seven years. But what next? Are they going to dig Ross the boss up? I dig Ross up. Hey, look, Dennis, I've still got some in basement. You know, I still got it, Dennis. My shoulders all right. Well, Ross the boss shouldn't make a comeback. He's happy in retirement, but. If he did come back, it'd be in bad taste, wouldn't it? Same as Fuki coming back on a board registered shows. Now, if Nicky Smedley came back on board registered show, that'd be in bad taste because he's been out too long, hasn't he? So I think an unlicensed fight's about right. That I'll tell you another another good unlicensed fight that I'd like to see. Jason Barker against Perry the Real Deal. How? <laughs> Perry the real deal, how? Eh? He's got a bigger entourage than Rod Stewart ever had. Uh, that's a good fight, that. So if they can get it on, I think there's a bit of intense beef there between Perry Howe and Jason Barker. I think there's a bit of uh, raw sushi between Nicky Smedley and uh, the Fireball. But they're all good lads then. So good luck to them. Uh, Eddie Hills, a.k.a. Little Edward Hearn. Hmm, where can we start with this one? It appears that Eddie Hearn had a couple of skills bouts, only two. Now, he did say four and three by way of, but the two skill bouts, they're, they're where they don't have a, there's no decision, there's no winner. But I think back in them days, they weren't kill, called skills bouts. I'm not so sure. Not so sure, but some hardcores will probably have to point that out to me. When did skills bouts come out? But I've heard two sides of the story now. Eric Guy, who used to work for Matchroom and do all the filming down that way for amateur shows, he's told somebody that I know that... Uh, let me get it on my phone. Uh, that Eddie Earn did have two fights, only two, and there were no footage. In the see what it says there, match in boxing, Eric Guy. So if Eric Guy says Eddie Earn had two fights, he had two fights. Uh, there's no footage though. But point I want to make is this. Let me just turn that off. Point I want to make is this. I saw the interview that Eddie did with this guy who had a bigger pair of tits than Dolly Parton. I saw the interview, but they never spoke about the fight or anything. All they spoke about was oh, how it's good to reminisce and all that. They sort of like pussyfooted around it. You know, if I'd have been sat there where Coogs was, I'd have said, Eddie, where did it happen? Like, what gloves did you have on? Who were you training? And he's obviously going to say, Jimmy Mack. My dad with there and all that. Look, if your dad's Barry Earn and you're an amateur show, you can go up to a guy who's got a show and you can say, can my son have a move around with somebody? You know, 12 year old. The other guy never even fought again, did he? But he said he'd had 30 fights or something, so Eddie retired him, did he? What the guy did say that was a blatant lie is, oh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd boxed uh, amateur fights with 17 year olds. Would never happen. That would never happen. 11 and 12 year olds don't box 17 year olds. It'd be people at the show would say, what are you doing? It... It wouldn't happen. Safety is paramount. Now, a thing, a, a skills bout is not an amateur bout. Now, Eric Guy did say the two fights that Eddie Hearn had was not, I repeat, was not registered amateur fights. So they're not down in history. So, and other people I've spoke to are all saying, well, basically, he had a couple of skills bouts. Eric Guy's right. Because his dad had a bit of influence. So when little Edwards had a little move around in ring in front of a bit of a crowd, and his dad's had to pacify him off with that, hasn't he? But in little head, little Edwards, little mind, in that right, little Edward. Little Edward. In little Edwards, little mind, he thinks that he's uh, was an amateur boxer. So the four and oh, three by way of's now two thinking skills, uh, two, sorry, two skills bouts. 
we know decision because they don't give a decision on skills bars. So they just raise hands up. It's to in, it's, in, it's to integrate you into boxing. I've seen it many times at Mick Wales gym, skills bars. It's to integrate you into boxing. But no in boxing industry is going to come out and say anything, are they? Do you know why? Because they all want to get on Sky and own. All roads lead to Edward, little Edward. So, Eddie, if anything, you've made your son look even more stupid now. Because now that it's come out that you had two skills bouts, you're not even 2 and 0, are you? You're 0 and 0 because you don't get an amateur card with it. For example, I'll show you something here. I'll turn it off on a. Hang on. Let me show you something here. Right. I'm going to show you the card here. I think this is Dennis Hobson Sr.'s card in Sheffield. Uh, people on this card, people like Trev Couch, Clinton Woods, Neil Port. You remember him? We used to train Clinton Woods. He got murdered. Uh, Dennis Hobson, Den Ben, Ron Lyle, he fought on this card. And they have what's known as a program. So when there's a show on, a programs are made up and you have lists. There's no, Eddie's not on any programs, right? He's not on any programs whatsoever, right? He's not on any amateur cards, right? Not on any amateur cards, not on any programs. What's that? And he is not, he's not got any, had any photos took. Now, for example, Eric Guy, this production guy at Matchroom, He'd have filmed Eddie Barry to say, my son's uh, having a couple of bouts. I want you to film him, you know, for family album and all that. Anybody who goes in Eddie Earn's offices, which he grew up in, because that's where he grew up in. Anybody who goes in there, there's pictures of Eddie all over the house, from a young age up to, up to what he is now. A big oaf. Now, there ain't one picture of him with these two opponents. Not one picture. Of Eddie, not even in his shorts and his, you know, like when they come for these skills bouts at amateur shows, there's mum and dad there and little Johnny and photograph. You'd have thought big family like Earns, big moment for little Edward making his uh, amateur debut when really it's a skills bout. But there's not wrong with that. Not one photo, not one photo. And I'm going to show you this. Not one photo and not, not a program. Now that's a that's a program that. See that there? That's what happens. You get a list of programs. Let me have a look who Dennis for. Mick Joyce, Neil Port, uh, Mick Joyce, Dennis Hobson, Rick Richmond Boxing, Dennis Fort, S. Bailey from Tom Hills, that's in Denneby. Let's have a look who Clinton for. Clinton Woods for G Swift from Richmond. Clinton from Hillsborough. Uh, I think big Trev, Trev Couch was on this show, wasn't he? Crouch. Trev Crouch from Croft House. He's a pal of my mate, Russ Atkinson. Let's have a look. G Wilson from Armthorpe, Doncaster. Uh, so basically, there were no programmes. No amateur card, no nothing. So over to you, Edward, little Edward. What I want to make is, now that we've had this and that they've completely showed themselves up, what Coogan has showed me is that he's basically Eddie Earn's PR guy, isn't he? Because he didn't ask him any probing questions, did he? He let Eddie have court and he controlled the, 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 the interview, didn't he? 15 minutes. When has Eddie Earn ever done a 15-minute one? Every time he sits down, it's an hour and a half, isn't it? Or 45 minutes. 15 minutes, Eddie couldn't wait to get out of there. Never spoke about Eddie's skill set at all. I mean, what next, Eddie? Eddie Earn, the fast bowler. Do you remember Eddie Earn? Yeah. Played for Essex under 19. Coogs, yeah. Can you imagine Eddie, an uh, opening bowler? He said he was an opening fast bowler. Eddie tearing down for 45 paces down to wicket like Bob Willis. Eddie with his mullet, big oaf, bouncing them over at wicketkeeper's Eddie. Well, that fast, he, he was bouncing them, and then we're going over at sight screen. Is that what we're going to have next? Coogan and Eddie going and digging somebody up who, who, who were a batsman who got bowled out middle peg or LBW by Eddie Hearn. Do you know what I mean? Oh, 
God, what, you know, unbelievable, isn't it? It's like never ending, isn't it? The, the adventures of Tintin. When is it going to stop? Hey, what next? Golf agent, author, podcaster, director, promoter. Jack of all trades, master of one, promoting. I don't see, think he's good at anything else apart from telling pork parties. But it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. But uh, any story, though, in my opinion, it's got more holes in it than, than Shook Knight's seven series Beamer, hasn't it? It's got more holes in it than that, hasn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I just can't work out why there's no footage. There isn't even a photograph. There isn't even a photograph of little Edward in his Billy Ricky colours with his gloves. And uh, I've got a fight to win, lads. Oh, my God. He's got to be trolling us with this, Annie. If not, Coogan, why would you want to be premier premiering something like that? And the other guy, at the beginning of the interview, is pulling his teeth out. Where did they dig him up from? Some park bench? What's all that about? Get that bloke, whatever his name is, he can come on here and I'll ask him some questions. Uh, some proper questions. I'm not just going to tickle his, his nut, nuts. Do you know what I mean? But it is what it is. But I want to know why it's took nearly four years and why a few years back, Jim McDonald asked about it when he trained Eddie Earn for his amateur career. He went, do me a favour and watch him fight. So let's have Jim McDonald on to confirm this because I ain't buying it. I'm not buying it at all. I'm not buying it. It'd be like John Field was coming back with a border control license, wouldn't it, on a Dennis show? I couldn't buy into that. I couldn't buy into that when he's been missing seven years. I just I don't get that. Fielke, have an unlicensed and put some money in your pocket and uh, set your little Reggie up for uh, a car when he's 18 or something. Not rocket science, mate, but don't do it through board, mate. Jesus. Do we want to go through back through all that again? Oh my god. But like I said, it's not on any, any amateur cards or anything like that. So let's have a look. Oh, I'm saying if anybody's out there at these shows, these two shows that Eddie Earn went to, we've, we've heard story for one guy. Who's this other guy? But for anybody out there, if there's just so much as a photo, send it in and we'll send you a free Porky Teddy. Oh, that reminds me. Where have they gone? Oh, yeah. I think I can only get these in blue now, I've been told. So I forgot to do forgot to uh, do a competition over there. These are black. These are black ones. But the uh, I can only get them in blue. I've been told size seven to twelve. Uh, the question is, the question is, and you've got to be quick with this one. You've got to be quick. The question is, who was the first professional fighter to dethrone Muhammad Ali? All right. Think of the question that I've just said to you. Who was the first professional fighter? to dethrone Mr. Muhammad Ali, the greatest heavyweight of all time. All right. Uh, well, so that should be about it. I'm going to, uh, got a few things to do now and we'll come back with this later. All right. Peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing two seconds. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a nice comment. And thank you for all them people that are subscribing and watching the channel and sharing it on your WhatsApp. Boom, boom, boom. You'll get your hardcore badge when we get them made. <laughs> Peace out.